just configure this real quick. Couple things I need to get done today. There we go, Substance Painter. All right, that's good. Fire out Quadro here. Hey Zoradine, thanks for showing up. Um, okay, so more and then administrator. Yes. Okay, so I need to do some quick sculpting. Open recent anteater reference. Go ahead and load up our anteater here. Prehistoric creatures, giant anteater, giant anteater. There he is. Hey, get a face on this guy. Um, gun's already done. If you go back and look at my live stream, you've pretty much seen the entire making of that of the gun we were talking about. If you haven't, uh, let's see. Let's go to our trusty YouTube channel. Um, so what I need to do is edit all these things down. I got kind of caught up with Instalon. So if you haven't seen that, you can go to my YouTube channel here. If you go to playlist, there's um, an Instalon playlist. There is a live stream full episodes. If you go here and you scroll, no, you need not scroll down. Basically, Pav Work 23 through 26 is all uh, gun episodes there. So that would be here. Let me link that for you. There you go. Hey everybody, thanks for showing up. <laughs> exactly. So, okay. Um, so I've got my live stream up here and I've got my Anteater reference all around me. If you guys haven't checked out Quadro, it's K... U A D R O reference viewer. I can link you guys here. Hold on. I cannot live without this thing. You can download it here for free. And it's just a reference viewer here, so you can save. You'll, you, can, you can watch videos on that, but that's what I'm using now. So I've got all these little anteater head references, all well, anteater references, and I can kind of go in and zoom in on all the heads here. So I'm just going to have a bunch of heads because really all I'm going to do is finish out this guy's head real quick. So I'm trying to find as many head views as I can. There's a good one of his little snoot and his cute little mouth there. So I'm going to throw this down here. Some really weird ones of these hands. Their hands are just bizarre. Um, I probably didn't do a great job on it. Here's their weird kind of, I guess, jaw. Ah, oh, here's a good one. I'll stick this. Actually, I'm going to move this chat down a little bit. There we go. And keep this head up. Heads. And any more heads? Here's a cool one. So, yeah, check out the bottom of these guys' feet. See how they've got, like, two big curled claws, and they've got these pads they walk on. I mean, their back feet aren't that weird, but they've got these big side pads on the side of their feet. Kind of weird. Weird creech. And, of course, we can always resize these things and move them around. Good enough. What do we got over here? Yeah, like they have their arms, like, curled in, and they got these little pads over here on the side of their hand here. And I guess we could also do a little bit of fiber mesh today as well. It's been a while since I've been into fiber mesh, but... Cool. Tongue is nearly the length of the body. I would believe it. Some of these... Yeah, like, look at this thing. Pretty nuts. Any more? Any more? I think that's all of them. Okay, so I think I've got enough head reference here. So real quick, um, we're going to just kind of sculpt out this head. And if I wanted to, I could go ahead and just take this, pop this head off into its own subtool and dynamesh it a higher resolution. But since this body is fairly done-ish, as done as I want to take it, um, I'm going to go ahead and let me move this Wacom over. 
There we go. And are we mapped correctly? Eh, close enough. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to get, uh, I'm going to, do I need to turn off project? So when I'm doing creature sculpting, I like to stay really low and then you keep project on while I'm sculpting. But then as soon as I get to higher resolutions, you're going to see when I have project on and I Dynamesh, it just takes a long time to Dynamesh because it has to run a project uh, as well. It's not a real big deal. Preferences, edit, turn off line cursor to surface. Um, it's not a super huge deal. And also I'm going to go to smooth stronger. But um, just something to keep in mind once you get to the higher resolutions here. And we'll go ahead and smooth this out there. And I figure I'm gonna keep I'm gonna turn perspective off as well. I know I'm doing organic sculpting in it. I should have perspective on, but I'm just too old school. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crank my lazy radius up so that I can get that long smooth stroke, and then I'm gonna tap L to turn it off. So I know that if I need to turn it on, I can just tap L because by default standard brush is gonna have a lazy radius of one, which is fine kind of smoothing your stroke out, but not really what I'm looking for here. So I'm just kind of going through my reference here. Um, looks like they got like little creases in here. So I'm going to go in my Damien standard brush, brush and we're going to crease this back. And before I go into the final detailed sculpt, I'm going to Z remesh it. But before I do that, I'm still in Dynamesh just in case I need to do anything crazy like, you know, ramp. And then I can go through and Dynamesh this. And then when I go to Z Remesh this thing, that's when I know he's basically done. And again, we're going to go into Damien Standard Brush here. Let's kind of carve this stuff out. Uh, another thing I want to do this morning is I got a question about how to use, and it's been a while, so I don't know, maybe it's broken, but taking my GDC female. So if you go to, hold on share dot substance share share dot allegorithmic dot com and if you want to follow along with me you can go to here to meshes and I've got this GDC FBS female in here I put this in here a long time ago back before I was using FBX files so it's a bunch of OBJs so um, I'm going to be downloading in fact let's go ahead and download it now log in there we go so I'm going to let that a little slow. I'm going to let that download and I can hit that up in a bit. In case you missed it, here is my, um, we just continued modeling um, Mario characters on my Pixelogic channel. So you can go, I'll link you guys to that there. Um, if I got my, got my chat going here, um, if I miss anything, just keep shouting it out and I'll try to get to all your questions as, as possible. Um, but if, if, uh, I apologize in advance if I haven't. I'm trying to keep my head up. I know that I've changed the position of where my head is. Um, I couldn't... My Logitech webcam, I put on top of my Dell, and it was kind of slippy slidey, so I don't really have a good surface up there, so I just kind of moved it over to my other side, and then my head was pointing this way, so I felt kind of weird, like, looking off the edge of the screen on the other side, so hopefully this doesn't bother everybody. Um... Hack Jail says, hey, I was the guy who asked you to do the back cow a few months back. Now we're watching your Pav Basics. You're the best. Thank you very much. And uh, hopefully that helped out. Um, that was the quickest way I could think of to do a back cow. I'm sure there's many, many more ways. Um, but <laughs> Craig Kelly says, tongues are two feet long, Max. Read the fact wrong. Eh. I don't know. That's a really long tongue. Still. Even still. Um, did you see... Uh, Damien updated the damn standard brush. I didn't see. Um, question from Eus. Uh, my question may be strange, but for example, if a model are cool enough, have a strong enough portfolio, how can he find his place in the industry, private contact, job post, or via classrooms teacher? Um, usually, if you're just a if you have a really strong portfolio and it's relevant to the company you're applying to, so you have your portfolio, what do we call it, tailored to the uh, company you want to work for. Usually if you just send it, sometimes what they'll do, um, it'll be like an opportunistic hire. So it's like, okay, maybe we didn't have a job posting for our weapons modeler, but you have amazing weapons and it's perfect for our super uh, high res, high tech, sci-fi, hyper real 
games that we're working on so we can go ahead and grab you up um of course sometimes it is a timing thing and it's like oh you're great we just don't have a spot open for you so sorry about that but i would imagine if your portfolio is really strong you could just apply to a bunch of places and you'd just get a job that way um, that's the good and bad thing about our industry is if you have a really super strong portfolio and it's tailored to the company you want to work for or companies you want to work for it <clears throat> should be pretty easy to find a job and you don't have to like go to a certain school or know anybody in particular it doesn't hurt i suppose but <clears throat> um the bad news is you have to have a really strong portfolio and uh tailor it to the company you want to work for so it's not the easiest thing in the world but hey huge thanks for showing up hugo sorry <laughs> um are you on Wednesdays on the Pixel Logic channel? I don't know why, but I thought you were on Mondays. I am actually on Tuesdays. So Tuesday morning at this time, I'm on Pixel Logics, and then Thursdays, I'm on this one. Uh, I'm going to not be on their channel next Tuesday, however. Sorry about that. Um, if you go to www.zbrushlive.com, then uh, do you have any technical artists in your studio? If yes, is it common they work with scripts involving ZBrush or mostly Maya? Uh, that's a good question. I would say now that you mention it, Rarely do we get a lot of ZBrush scripts, but we do have people, um, one a guy at work uh, does, um, I think, uh, Ben does uh, ZBrush scripts for the environment artists. I don't usually use a whole lot of them, but I'm sure if I could think of some, I could ask him to kind of figure some stuff out for us. But we do sometimes get uh, Z scripts uh, made for us. Joseph Dress does a lot of good ones. In fact, go to um, just Google ZBrush plugins. And we might use some of these too. Go to the Pixelogic Download Center, and you're going to see ZBrush plugins. Go down here to the Employee Created. I'm pretty sure Employee Created means Joseph Dressed. I could be wrong, so don't quote me on that. And a lot of these we use. Uh, Clean Tool Master I use all the time. ZRP I use all the time. I am Extractor's pretty good. Everybody always asks me about Matt Cat Baking. There it is. And then um, the Nano Tile Textures we've gone over on my channel. Really, really cool stuff in here. So if you haven't checked those out, for sure do it. Uh, I've been trying to do cow base off my scan data in my own head, but naturally the polys are a mess. Yeah, scan data cleanup's a whole thing. Um, but if you go to my channel, um, live stream highlights. Pause that here. If you go down here, you're going to see I took scan data from a traditional modeler who had his model scanned in, and we took that and did. Uh, so scan data, clean up the head, adding eyes and teeth, changing the hand pose, adding hair. <laughs> I remember, I guess we did add hair to the guy, but uh, anyways, um, yeah, so we cleaned up this scan, scan data for the head here and kind of went through a different bunch of different techniques to kind of do a little cleanup job there and also for the body. So pad work 12, we do a little bit of that there. Um, also, now that you mention it, this is in a weird spot, but if you go to, oh, uh, where was it? Lumi questions. This is an old, oh, there's Quadro, um, Lumi questions. We also do photogrammetry cleanup with the scan data cleanup. And this is where we take the skull of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, I suppose that's what that is. And then we need to go ahead and do a cleanup pass on that. So pretty rough, but then we can get a pretty good result as well. So this might be useful to you. Uh, when an export... When I export a texture from ZBrush at a high subdivision level to a lower mesh in 30 AS Max, that the fuse turns black. Export a texture from ZBrush. Let me, um, we can do that really quickly on this guy here. I'll get to it in a bit because I am going to do a slight poly paint on this guy. So let me just throw that into my mm -hmm, mm -hmm, streaming topics here. And I'll try and hit that before we leave. Uh, why do so many modelers do models in millions when they could do the same in less? Sometimes it's easier just to throw polygons at the problem than to sit there and try and resolve shapes with, uh, I know I'm certainly guilty of this, is if I can just dynamesh it and get my idea done that way, and it takes me, you know, seven or eight seconds to drag an alpha, I will do that as opposed to spending seven or eight minutes or seven or eight hours trying to resolve a surface uh, in a more traditional box modeling method. And really, I've as you can see, even when we were doing the auto stuff, it may not be the most, uh, if you go to the Instalod, the most, um, you know, this thing was 30 million polygons, you know, not, not super, 
optimized here, but I could always decimate it down if I wanted to. Um, but I was still able to do the automatic game res and install lot in Maya down to, I think it was like 12,000 or so, and then bake out the maps and take it into Painter and just start going from there. So if you haven't checked that out, it's a pretty cool, pretty cool process. If you go to my channel here and you go to the live stream full episodes, we do a that ba same basic uh, premise. This is all from ZBrush, just decimated down and then baked maps and painter. So an auto UV it in Maya and stuff like that. But uh, same, same process, not nearly as production ready or as clean as the install process, but that's an alternative if you're just trying to get stuff in quick. Um, the way to hide show objects like you can in ZBrush. Uh, you can as long as you have texture sets set up. That's the only way I know how to. <laughs> or like Sortium says, you can turn your monitor off and then everything's hidden. Cool. Dam 2 is on Gumroad for free. Go look it up. Um... I have a quad core can only handle maybe 4.5 million, maybe 15 before it crashes. Uh, that's another thing too. I rarely, if ever, have a any single subtool. Like I'll have multiple subtools that are up to 4 million. I n almost never go higher than 4 million on any individual subtool if I can help it. Very rarely, even on um, this system, which um, let me see. My this PC. So on this system here, this is with the uh, AMD Th Ryzen Threadripper 1950X. So this thing has uh, 16 cores at 3.6 gigahertz, it looks like, and I guess 3.4 base, and 128 gig of RAM, and I still don't go over 4 million polygons per subtool, just because, I mean, it, the performance is fine. I could get this thing up to 64 million per subtool if I wanted to, and probably still not take too huge of a hit on performance, but um, I'm not the biggest fan of that. Uh, what's your opinion of not being able to render in Maya 2018? Um, I don't know. Can I not render in Maya 2018? Oh, uh, as far as like Arnold and stuff, I don't really render in Maya, but that's concerning. The project option in Dynamesh, however, when I even have the slightest details, 18K poly, I Dynamesh and goes to 1 million. When is it appropriate to use that option? Oh, you know what? I forgot to mention when you're in, you have project mode turned on, go to geometry, Dynamesh, you're going to see a sub projection. That's probably why it's taken a little bit longer too. You're going to see the sub projection on and you have project on. It's going to, as your surface changes, not so obvious on this uh, particular piece here, but if we go to... Give me a second. Cube mid. I totally forgot about that. That's a 4R8 thing. Let me go ahead and split on mass points. And then if we take this one and dynamesh it, um, you're going to see it kind of collects on the edges here. It collects more edges. Uh, that's the sub projection here. If you turn that down to 0.5, it will turn that off. So then it'll go ahead and project, but then keep your geometry nice and uh, even there. Um, more info on that. Again, if you go to my YouTube channel playlist, you can go to uh, Intro to Zebra 4 8 What's New. I'm going to link you guys to that, and that'll run through that option as well. I forget. I forget things. Cool. All right. Let me go ahead and delete this. Now, we do need uh, some sort of a mouth bag. Let me pause this real quick. Um, there we go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete that cube. <clears throat> and we do have an eyeball set in there. So that was just an insert brush uh, on this eyeball. I'm going to go ahead and hit D to smooth that down just a little bit. That's just a dynamic preview smooth here. And you can see, you know, this isn't that high, but I am just kind of dialing this in here. So their eyeballs do look, uh, this one looks a little bit tilted. What I can do is I can mask this out, rotate, grab my uh, gizmo here, and I can just rotate this entire mesh down. A little bit here. I'm gonna go ahead and redynamesh. And I do still have project turned on. And it is kind of a waste to waste all that processing time on projecting dynamesh back here where I don't really need it. That's why I would tend to cut the head off. You know what? I keep saying it and I keep not doing it. So let me just practice what I preach here. Let me go ahead and uh, split hidden. And then I can just dynamesh this thing. Actually, before I do that, 
I'm going to go ahead and do a quick close holes mirror and weld. And I'm going to take this one, W, control tap. And I'm just going to give myself a little bit of padding here. There we go. That way I can kind of avoid some of those crunchy uh, edges in there. And now I can go ahead and crank this resolution up. And I'm going to turn project off. There we go. So I see how much faster that was. And then I've got plenty of polygons in here I can play with. Now again, I am going to be Z remeshing this thing in a second, but I'm just going to go ahead and fine tune this just really quickly, as quick as I can. Um, I like the block out phases of modeling a little bit more. That's when I can be a little bit freer and just kind of do my thing. But then, um, you know, eventually I do have to slow down and mask and let's see, mask this thing here and then, you know, take this and move it over a little bit. Now, of course, when I, if I dynamesh that mesh at any point, it's going to suck those together. So I'm going to try to avoid doing that. And then probably I might just save that whole wrinkle thing for when I Z-remesh this. We'll go ahead and give an indication of where I want to kind of pull that over. I'm going to go into our clay brush here. And we can just build this up. Give me a second. There we go. Let's kind of go through here and build this up. So I'll basically just a lot of standard brush with a fairly higher intensity than the default. And we got smooth stronger turned on in my smooth brushes. And there's the other smooth algorithm too. You can hold down shift and then let go of shift when you're smoothing. And that'll give you a kind of a form It'll maintain your forms a little bit better. It's kind of up to you. And even what I'm doing here doesn't, I don't know that it has to be super detailed. I'm doing the face more detailed than the body. The body just kind of a muscle block out, but even then it's going to be covered in fat and skin and a lot of hair, really wiry hair. So it doesn't need to be that detailed. I guess the ears and then around the eyes and the mouth and this little snoot he has needs to be a little bit more detailed. So that's why I'm spending a little bit more time up here in the head. And I don't have any real good shots of the ear, so I'm just going to kind of make some educated guesses. And really, it's pretty. it looks pretty simple on most of these. He's got just a little, little fuzzy flap here, so I don't need to go crazy or anything. It's not like he's got bat ears or anything where they got lots of cool, you know, cartilage and veins and stuff. He looks just like he has like little Teddy Ruxpin here. Anybody remember Teddy Ruxpin? I'm going to bring him back with the 80s nostalgia craze going on. Oh, that reminds me, I guess Stranger Things is starting soon. I guess I'll have to watch that. I am in the middle of Mind Hunter, and I'm a huge... I'm, I go through phases where I'll watch a ton of true crime, and then I won't watch any for a long time. For some reason, like I'll go on Netflix... And I'll uh, have a true, uh, there will be a true crime something like Autopsy or Next 48 or something. I'll watch a lot of that. Or Mind of a Serial Killer and all that kind of stuff. So um, I remember reading the Mindhunter book a long time ago. That was very interesting. The uh, behavioral sciences in the FBI. Really, really interesting stuff to me, anyways. Your mileage may vary. But, uh, and it's also David Fincher, who I'm a huge fan of, ever since Alien 3, <laughs> where I think he kind of got the short end of the stick by Fox, but he survived, I suppose. Alrighty. Um, this will figure out on the Ziri Mesh, and also I'm going to put, like I said before, a little mouth bag in here. In order to do that, I'm going to grab a little sphere. That's going to be an interesting mouth bag here. I'm going to put that sphere right in here, and I'm going to go ahead and do a split mass point. So if you want to, if you see me going in here, I usually try to go, okay, split mass points, it's in your sub tool menu, blah, 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 under your split menu. Um, if you want that, let me go ahead and link you to this here. Gumroad and QB brush. So if you go to my Gumroad page and you scroll all the way down, there's an intro to ZBrush files you can check out. And then on my Gumroad page, there's an intro to ZBrush files you can check out. And if you go to those, and it's free, you don't have to pay for it. It's just the intro to ZBrush files, and then you can get this custom menu if you want it. If you don't, go to um, the intro to ZBrush 
part two playlist. Um, copy link address. Go to this one, and it'll walk you through like custom hotkeys, custom menus. Just just watch that and make your own. Um, <laughs> okay, let's see if I missed anything here. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, put a saddle on it. I mean, I guess you could ride an anteater around. That might be a cool fantasy, like a little hobbit <laughs> riding around on an anteater or something. Um, might have been asked said before, I was wondering, how did you get your start in your career and what tips would you give people starting out with ZBrush? I started my career a long time ago. Not a long time ago, but relatively in this industry. It was 2005. I graduated Ringling. So I got a job at EA Tiburon working on sports games. And I was recruited out of Ringling, so I can't really give you advice on like you know how I mean I was very very lucky when I graduated when I did because that was the first Xbox 360 hadn't come out yet so it was brand new they're in development they had their dev machines that were the size of you know mini fridges and uh, uh, not even mini fridges like um, those big uh, those freezers you put in your garage and uh, I was very lucky that there was a lot of bodies needed right when I graduated because I think the next couple of years or after that, it really, they really dialed back. And I don't know that the game industry has gotten, it's very, very much more competitive than it was right when I graduated. So again, I was super duper lucky. Um, but just starting out with ZBrushes, you got to put in the time. A lot of times I'll work with students who, you know, are very proficient in Photoshop and doing all sorts of things with drawing and Photoshop and then they'll do they'll use ZBrush or a 3D program and they'll be like oh god what a drag you know this is such a pain and it's so slow and hey, what's the point point?" and I'm like well I mean how many models have you done well the two this is my second one and then I'm like well how many how many drawings have you done oh a million you know if you want to get good at something it doesn't just happen you have to and, ob and it's obvious, you have to put in the time and you have to do it. I, and even when you watch the videos, you can watch all of my ZBrush videos, but if you never actually do any of that stuff or are, try and problem solve with that stuff on your own projects, um, let's go ahead and turn on Lazy Mouth, tap L, you're not really gonna become proficient. Uh, anything I do in ZBrush that looks easy or it looks like I go fast, which <laughs> isn't gonna be while I work on this guy because we're doing detail stuff, but you know, when we're just kind of constanting stuff out and it seems like it's fast and easy, it's because I've done this for a long time, many times over, many thousands, thousands of failures along the way in order to get to the point where I'm comfortable, you know, and even then, you know, I, I'll pick up new programs all the time. That's kind of my, my jam. I like to do, I like to kind of pick up new programs and kind of learn them. And you can see, you know, I'm, I'm more comfortable in some programs than I am in others. You can definitely tell. I try not to let it show too much, but it's there. Yeah, and like Substance Painter and ZBrush, I'm pretty comfortable in. Uh, but like Instalog, when I was doing that, I was, I was basically learning it. And that Maya Stingray shader, I was learning that as I was recording. I was like, oh, there's a Maya Stingray shader. Let's download it. Hmm, let's figure out how this works while I record, which was not a good idea. But uh, I guess it worked out. We figured it out. <laughs> it wasn't too painful, I hope. But um, yeah, we'll clean this up in a bit. And it looks like he's also got a little ridge on the top here. There we go. Um, originally, what we had done, we go in here to texture, import, and we grab um, one of these side views here. I guess this is a pretty good one. And then we go ahead and select it, throw it into our spotlight here. I, I like to use this. You don't have to use spotlight, but I like to use spotlight for my reference. And then we had lined him up or her. I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. Go to perspective here and you just kind of line it up and get your, um, get this stuff kind of worked out and get your proportions worked out. So that's where we started. And then once you get to a certain point, you don't need to have you don't need to keep checking your proportions. It's probably pretty accurate. And then you can just kind of eyeball your stuff. But you can always, I mean, it's a good habit to get into to always kind of bring in, like I should be bringing in this head reference and making sure I'm okay. I'm not overly concerned. I think this will be good enough. But I 
Uh, hey, Mike, I don't know if you get to uh, tune in live, but your videos help me a lot because you go over a point in the right direction, merging down objects to one mesh and retopoing them for use in other packages. Um, I'm sure we've gone over that. And really, you don't even have to merge. Uh, in fact, if I wanted to retopologize over this whole thing, um, you can use the topology brush. I personally wouldn't, but you can go and use in anything that's on your screen and active, it will snap to. So then if you turn this down to one, that'll go ahead and get, oh, turn it down to one. That'll give you just topology. So if I go ahead and split mass points here, and then I've got topology here. So now at this point you can, and you don't have to do this, but you can like divide this up, subtool project all, divide it up, project all, divide it up, project all, divide it up, project all. So now that we have this little piece here, it went ahead, whoops, don't dynamesh it. It went ahead and projected that detail and I have subdivision history. So that's just the basics of topology and ZBrush and then getting your details back, which is what we're going to be doing. Um, an alternative to that is ZRemesher. So we'll be going over that today too. And then another alternative, which is probably what I would use for very precise modeling, which we're going to get over today, is um, Z-Spheres. And really Z-Spheres is the same way. Any subtools you have visible on your screen, it will snap to. So you don't really have to merge anything. The only time you would merge is if I wanted to merge these two things together and use zero mesher to give me automatic topology. So we'll go over there. Can you tell me how I can get Instalod? You can go to their website maybe and request a, a thing. I know they're backed up. I think I accidentally, um, <laughs> I hope they're ready for when I posted. Cool. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, and again, I apologize, I'm going through these really quickly. Uh, I'm getting like three feeds here right now. Uh, do you know if you can move submenus around in a custom menu? I don't think you can. Like, uh, that's when I have my custom menu here. Now that you mentioned that, so here's my PAV custom. I drag this over here. Uh, once you make one of these menus, it's kind of stuck there. You would have to go through and delete this menu and then remake it. I know it's not great, but I don't know that you can just move those things. Uh, yeah, he's a little bit shredded. Like I said before, this is just to kind of get my proportions dialed in, and then basically you could just take this thing, smooth it out, and then, because that's just going to be like skin and fat over this. Uh, this is more like a skinned anteater, but uh, that was just to kind of get him dialed in a little bit. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, we're going to animate the moment with the portrait. What's the best way to teach yourself the fundamentals and make sure the proportions are all correct on anatomy? Um, lots of books, lots of videos. Um, we can maybe do some head sculpting towards the end. We can talk about different techniques for like construction method versus, um, oh, there's some other stuff you can do. They call it like Riley abstractions and stuff like that. That's kind of fun. Um, cool. Da, 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 da. Alrighty. Um, let's keep going here. We got the head here. Alt tap the head and we got this going. Okay. And we got the nose going. So I think it's time to start doing this mouth bag thing. So I got this mouth bag in here and I'm going to use this as a subtractive mesh. Turn perspective off again. Turn the floor off. There you go. So what I can do is, because I split it off in, this, in a separate subtool here, I can go to transparency. Now I can kind of see where this mouth bag is going to end up going. And in here, I can like, I hate when it does this. Stop. I can scale this out a little bit. And then I can go ahead and just dynamesh this as well. Because I inserted it on my other mesh, it went ahead and inherited my dynamesh property. So now I can go through, I can mask this area out, invert that mask, hit W, and we'll just go ahead and pull this out. And we'll go ahead and fan this out as well. So now when I go out of transparency mode, you're going to see this subtractive mesh is going to cut through the sides of the mouth and then also kind of give them a little ball back here. Of course, if you want to, you can invert that and you can like, you know, scale the ball back or you can go in here with your move brush and you can give yourself a little bit more working room. If you did want to act you know, put a whole tongue in there. Now he can't open his mouth very wide, so there's probably, and also turn on ghost if you want to get in there. So you probably don't need to have a huge mouth bag in here, but if you're so inclined, you can certainly do that. So uh, now that we have these two together, 
And let's go ahead and I'm going to pinch this down. I'm going to go hit the Y key. I'm going to pinch that down. There we go. So now we can make, we'll go ahead and redynamesh this mesh here. And now we can go to, oh, we got our mouth bag and we got our head. So I'm going to go to the subtractive icon here. I'm going to merge these down. That's under subtool merge. And then just drag that out. And now I've got a little mouth bag in here. So when Z Remesher sees this mesh, it will go through and automatically give me a mouth bag. Now I can do a little bit of cleanup work in here. And again, it's a mouth bag. I don't care too much about it. But now I can go through here and I can inflate these corners of the mouth a little bit here. Give it a little bit more breathing room. So that I don't want a ton of thin edges or anything like that. And now we can go through here with our standard brush. We've got our lazy mouse on. And now we can kind of just build up a little bit here. So I usually, I go back and forth between wanting the lazy radius on and then just turning it off and then using my smooth here. If it's smoothing too much, hold down shift. I got smooth stronger turned on and then I can just crank that Z intensity down. There we go. Not too shabby. And again, we'll go a little bit more detailed once we Z remesh this thing. But for now, I'm going to see if I need to kind of pull these in just a little bit with just my move brush here. Something like that. Okay, so uh, we have this thing dynameshed at 2008 resolution. We have this thing dynameshed at 1000. So let's go ahead. Before we Z remesh, I want to make sure I merge these together so I don't get a seam line in there and it will treat it as one solid object from a Z remesher. So I'm going to hold down shift, shoot it to the top, tap this one, shoot it to the top. Now, if I want to maintain my resolution on my head, I'm going to move my head to the top. I'm going to merge this down and then I'm, it's going to, again, maintain my dynamesh properties, redynamesh this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There we go. And then now we have one solid mesh here. And I suppose if I want to maintain this muscular one, if we did want to do like, hey, here's a skinned anteater in your educational virtual reality experience, then we could keep this one. So I can save this one as muscles. And now what we can do, now we have the muscles here. I'm going to take my smooth intensity, crank that up. We can go through here. We can just kind of dial this back with a smooth brush and be like, okay, there are, there are going to be like skin and fat deposits here at the bottom of the neck, it looks like. So if you see this guy when he's looking up, you can kind of see this little line back through here. So we'll go ahead and maintain some of those. And it looks like also, now that I look at this other one, looks like this goes in. And then let's turn on our lazy brush. We can kind of just start pop that out just a little bit here. All right. Uh, so then if you wanted to, you could go through here and you could smooth this down and make it look a little bit more natural, like he's not super jacked. And he could even go in here and, you know, on the transitions on the body where you think the skin might overlap. And again, we're going to put hair on this. So you also have to ask yourself when I go to put on hair and fiber mesh, is putting in a lot of skin wrinkle detail really going to help me that much? Or is it just going to confuse fiber mesh and cause problems? So probably you might even just do a quick Ziri mesh where you just have the basics of the body and get rid of all this detail because it could cause problems when you start adding fur and X gen or fiber mesh like we're going to do and all that type of stuff. So I don't know, but we'll just give them a really quick smooth down. And just to make sure we don't accidentally save over, we'll go to save as, and we'll just go to giant anteater 02. So we got a block out, then we got a refined mesh, and then we got a muscle mesh, and I think we're good to go. So let's talk about uh, retopologizing this guy. Um, first thing we're going to do is decide where we want more topology to go, and we're also going to be using zero mesher. So let's scroll down, geometry, zero mesher here. Now, Ziri Mesher is going to completely swap out this mesh with another mesh. So if I want to project my details back to this mesh, we're going to need to take this subtool here, duplicate it off. I'm going to hold down Shift and turn off all my eyeballs and then turn these back on. So now we just have these two showing. And now when I go to Ziri Mesh this thing, I go a little bit faster. So now I won't get a little bit faster, but it just makes it a little bit easier. And when we go to project all, we won't be projecting to anything we don't want to see. So now if we take this and we go down here to zero mesh, let's, I guess, target polygon kind of fine at five is fine. I am going to keep my adaptive size up just a little bit. That's going to 
build in some more edges around these um, edge changes on here. And then curve strength. I don't think we're going to use curve strength, but we are going to use poly paint. So I can do color density. I'm going to make it a little bit more dense in the, let's go to a standard brush RGB turned on. I want it a little bit more dense in the face here and in the ears and in the lips. Basically all through here, all through his face here. Uh, what you could do also, you could just mask. Let's go to mask lasso. Invert that and then fill that with a color. That's just color fill like this. And if you want to, you can hit C and then you could paint out. Or maybe you don't need a whole lot of resolution. But I do want a little bit more resolution in the face. And also probably when we're sculpting in here. Oops. Let's also make sure we're in solo mode. So we're just painting on, or we just got this one showing. Um, standard brush, RGB. Oh, we turned that off. Now I can go ahead and sample this color, and it's basically using these colors to tell Ziri Mesher where to put in a little more geo. Now, sometimes this might be more trouble than it's worth, but we'll give it a shot. And then if there's any ever, ever any places where you don't want to have a whole lot of geometry, just go down here to Colorize and say, like, point, point 0.25 or something. And now when you go through here, you'll paint a blue. And that'll be very much less dense. But I don't really don't care about that. I just care about getting a little more density uh, in these key areas here. Let's add a little bit more to the feet. So basically, any place where there's going to be open skin, I want to be able to sculpt a little more detail on these little pads down here. And then anywhere where there's not, it's going to be fur. You can just, whatever. That, that density doesn't need to be that high. So uh, we do have X turned on, so we are going to get a symmetrical mesh out of Ziri Mesher. So let's go down here, target program on count of five. I think this is fine. So we'll go ahead and hit zero mesh and let that go for a minute. Uh, let's see, edit mode, particular tools, character, the edit this option. Cool, thanks for showing up, everybody. Um, always get funny results. And if I get funny results, I can fix them too. So we'll give it a shot. We'll see how it goes with the, our zero mesher. Cool. Oh, thank you for the support. Imagine Alex. Hopefully the the um, videos work out for you. It should. It's a pretty good between that and the intro or the Zebra Four Eight. What's new on my YouTube channel? If you missed that, go check that out. No, that's just on my YouTube channel, so you can just grab that. If you do want to download it, uh, I do have it on here, just so you can take the videos on the go for the person on the go. You can grab that one. Uh, Boot tutorial is pretty good one. The speed modeling and texturing I need to do an update for, which I think is going to be the weapon one. So I'll edit that down. Um, buttons just disappearing after certain operations. They don't show up no matter what. So I have to reset the custom UI in there back. This is strange. That is strange. I've had people message me about that. I haven't personally... Oh, zero mesh is done. I haven't personally had a problem with that. Um, Minus the usual, like, oh, my Z-spheres aren't showing up because I don't have a Z-sphere active, obviously. But um, sometimes, one thing I did have that was weird was when I had polish over here as an option. Sometimes that button, this polish button over here, would get bigger. Like, it would go pick up the polish from, like, the deformation or something. And that would do some weird stuff. I don't know why it would do that. I got polished on here too, but um, I think that's the only weird problem I've had. Um, but between major releases like ZBrush 4 R7 and R8, I always just take a screenshot of my custom menu and then remake it just to avoid uh, gremlins here. So this is our Ziri Mesh um, here. If we want to at this point, now we've lost our poly paint here, you can see. So if I Ziri Mesh this again, because you can't just go like Ziri Mesh or half and just knock that down, but then you'll lose the more density in the face. Now it's just a little bit more even. Um, and of course you can crank your adaptive size up if you wanted to build in more edges on the turns there. But I think this is exactly what I'm looking for. Um, but I am going to rebuild these uh, areas around the eyes and possibly the mouth. We'll see how that goes. Um, so what we can do in order to do that, if I want to do a little bit of manual cleanup work, we can go ahead and clone this off so it just shoots out an extra version of this. I can delete this one. And then with this giant anteater visible, let's go ahead and hit Control W, make it all in polygroup. Insert Z sphere. Go out of solo mode here. We can take the Z sphere, 
hit X to go across that symmetry, E to scale it down, go into transparency mode, just move this out of the way inside the body. You don't have to, you can just move it out into space if you want to, but if it's inside the body, uh, you won't accidentally grab it. And then really quickly, now that I have a Z-sphere active, I can go up here and go like, okay, edit topology, density of one, dynamic resolution of zero. And now I'm off to the races as far as just retopologizing this guy. I like to do matte cap pearl, dark gray, and now I'm ready to retopologize. So if I want to just start retopologizing with this thing, and this isn't what I'm going to do, but if you were so inclined, you could go through here and you could start. Um, and this, you know, if this was two separate pieces, in fact, if we just turn on the eyeballs here, and now we've got the eyeball and the body, we can go through here and we can Z remesh this here. So if I go through here and I just start doing my basics of Z remesh, we can grab all the detail and it will stick to the eyeball because the eyeball is visible here and I'm not doing a great job but I'm just kind of showing you how to and I'm actually a little bit out of practice here so here's the basics of z-sphere retopology you can go through here and if you want to delete something um, what I like to do is put a little dot in there just I'm in draw mode I can hold down alt and then delete that and then I can just draw through and then I can hit W and move these things around and, and again anything that's visible you can go through here and move uh, make your draw size really small so that you're only moving one of these at a time and then you could just start hit Q and if you want to start from another area make sure you hit control or shift uh, shift I guess let's hit control and it will start from where you left off and then hit control and then it'll start from that point there and then um, we can start here and then go all the way through oops tap off also on your screen if you need to and then we go down here so we're just kind of retopologizing and moving um, all that kind of stuff now if it ever does this sometimes you control drag and control shift tap that will go ahead and like clear any masking you might have because you can mask these things out uh, but so you're just basically retopologizing right now once you're done you're going to go down here to your adaptive skin, uh, hit A to preview, and then you'll get your adaptive skin preview. Now, by default, you might have your DynaMesh resolution turned up, so it'll do some really weird stuff on single-sided meshes like this. Um, that's just an option in a 4RA. Turn that down to zero. Um, your density might be at two by default as well. Go ahead and turn that down to one, so you're just getting your polygons, and then you just go make adaptive skin. Um, this Z-sphere we don't need anymore, so we'll go ahead and delete that. And then we'll go ahead and insert that skin Z sphere we just made. And then from here on out, it's just, um, you know, control D, uh, project all, control D, project all, control D, project all, control D, project all. And now we've got uh, our mesh here. Now you might see, oops, hold on just a second. One thing I forgot to check is if we go down here to display properties, you're going to see we have double turned on. If you turn double off, okay, it looks like it is pointing out the right way, uh, but we are getting some errors in here. This is easy enough to fix, so what we're going to do is let's, where are we at, geometry here. I'm going to go down like subdivision level three, and now we can use this BZP as your Z project brush. So again, B, Z, and then project. And now what you can do is turn off RGB, turn Z intensity up to I don't know, 79. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off X. We can smart resume this back. Uh, Z project brush doesn't really play nice with X symmetry turned on. And now you can hold down Alt and let go of Alt. And you can manually just kind of dial in uh, that projection. And now as we go up, in fact, let's just go ahead and delete higher. Now that we've projected that out, and I can even stay in solo mode if I want to. Um, because these things, as long as they're visible, it will project to them. So I can hit Control D project all and you can just check for errors as you start projecting this back and uh, we forgot that the eyeball is just a dynamesh dynamic preview so it's building in the faceting so in fact if you want to change that it's like oh why are we getting faceting just go to the eyeball here and go to apply those dynamic properties here so now we can go when we go to project all it'll go ahead and be a nice smooth result project all there we go. So now we've got this thing, we've got the details all projected back, but the problem is we have one goopy eye and one good eye. So now what I can do is I can mask this side because we want to keep it. And I'm going to go ahead and drop this down to like subdivision level three. Then we're going to go down here to deformation and we're going to do smart resim across the x-axis. And hold on just a second, let's close some of these things down here. We're going to go up one subdivision, smart resim, go up one subdivision. 
And the reason I'm doing this is the same reason why I like to subdivide up one and project, so, uh, subdivide up one and project, one and project, one and project, and not just go subdivide, 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 project all. Number one, it's more accurate. Number two, it's faster. Um, so smart resim. And now we can turn on X symmetry. And now we have two beautiful projected eyes here. And it looks like we got like a little pinpoint. So let's go smooth those out, I guess. That's weird. Um, our project was doing something weird in here. So we can actually, let's go down to like subdivision level four, smooth that out. Really doesn't like that. You can go back here to the back and I don't know why it's sending out these little little fibrous things. Um, but basically that's the idea behind manual retopology with multiple subtools so you don't have to merge anything. And then getting those details back if you want to, or you can just export that as your low res. But what we're going to do is grab this anteater high. Let's go ahead and make that just a little bit more rounded here. And these eyeballs we're going to position a little bit more accurately. And in fact, this one, I'm going to go ahead and hit Control-Z, and we'll go ahead and undo that apply. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our giant anteater. We're going to go to Insert Z-Sphere, X to go across X symmetry, E to scale it down, W to move it out of the way. And then again, I just have my custom menu up here, so density of 1, so I don't have to go all the way down here to adapt the skin. Um, density of 1, Dynamesh down to 0. And then instead of just going into edit topology, what I'm going to do is go to select topology. So I guess I do have to go down here. I don't do this very often, but that's why I don't have it in my custom menu. So underneath uh, topology here, there's a select topology option. So we're going to select our clone that we made. And now I can control drag, control shift tap. Uh, we're in X symmetry mode. So now we can just go through here. Let's go to mat cap and darker gray and now we can just go through here and we can clean this up so right around the eyes I think the mouth is actually fine and the nose is okay uh, but the eyes are just not gonna work so I could go in there and like oh I could have just made some curves and hope that it followed them a little bit let's go ahead also and turn off these eyeballs so we don't stick to them but now what I can do is hold down uh, we're in draw mode and we're in uh, edit topology mode so turn on edit topology and now we can hold down Alt. Let me just clear this out. And then I can go through here and draw. Let's also turn off transparent here. There we go. And now we can move these things around. Hit Q. And now we can just manually go in here and draw our topology as needed. So I'm going to have this follow the shape of the eye a little bit better. Kind of round it out here. And again, make your draw size pretty small. And then now we can just go through here and very quickly dial in these edges that we want. So I'm going to take this one here and we're going to go up and in. And then we're going to go down and around. And then we're going to do one more edge loop right in here. And again, you can use control and I think shift. I'm so used to just tapping off that uh, I'm a little bit inefficient. But uh, man, once you build a habit, it's really hard to break it. And again, I'm not overly concerned about beautiful topology, especially if something's going to be covered in hair. Uh, but you should do due diligence and make sure that your topology is good. And I will do a little bit of a cleanup pass. What I like to do is just do my retopology in ZBrush and then do my cleanup pass in Maya just because they're poly tools. Um, I'm just a little bit more used to them. But you could also use ZModeler to clean up your topology and then use Project All to make sure it projects back to the surface. Looks like I got a little extra one in there. There we go. So now we're just kind of going back and forth. And then again, moving as needed. And then here. And you could use any old retopology. You could be like, oh, I want to use Topogun. Oh, I want to use Quadra. Oh, I want to use this. Well, feel free to export all this shit out and do that. I personally, not a big fan. Like by the time I had this thing exported out and got it ready to 
draw stuff in another program, I'm probably already done with it in ZBrush. But there are good tools out there, and also not having to retopologize this whole thing manually um, is nice. And also, I can use programs like Instalod to give me LOD versions of this, so if I do need to do something that's a little bit more lower res, I can go through and just use those. And if I put a little thing in there, again, I can just tap and draw one in there and then hold down Alt and get rid of that. So now that we got this, let's go ahead and just put these eyelids in here. And then we'll go up. Let's move this over one. Looks like we need a little bit more resolution through here. Connect these up. Oops, and tap off, go through here, and then just start connecting these up, and then this one, this one, and then finally this one, this one, and then these two I can resolve. These are really ugly triangles over here, so we'll get we'll get rid of those in just a second. And then close, close. Uh, I guess we can draw this one all the way through here here and then let's see if we can resolve some of these. I'm going to take this one back here and then we can get rid of this one and then this one here could be a quad. We'll try that. Oops, I accidentally tapped off there. There we go. Through here and then when it saves your file, just make sure you go back into edit topology because it will bump you out of edit topology mode. That's a feature so you don't get a corrupt file. And then through here, let's go ahead and start capping some of this off. So we'll take this triangle, we'll quad this one out. Draw a size of one. And then through here, I can take this edge loop and go all the way around. Let's go ahead and just do that. You can see it's going to snap to the midline or the quarter line. And I think the midline is fine for our purposes here. So we got this built in, we got this, we got this edge captured. Let's go ahead and take this triangle over to this triangle. And then we'll delete that one, and then we'll move this one here. And then uh, this one isn't too ideal, but I think it'll be all right. And then this one isn't either. So we can go ahead and make this one a quad. And now we've got these two triangles here. So we'll just stick this triangle right into here. Got another triangle here. We can continue this back and meet it up here, but I think we'll be okay. And then we got one more leftover area, and Z, um, Z spheres will actually uh, resolve that for you, but I think we'll be okay. And let's go ahead and hold down Shift, turn off Dynamic. All right, yeah, Shift and Double Tap, I think. And now we can get a really small brush size there. I like to keep dynamic on for my brushes if I can, but if you're ever working at a certain scale and it won't let you, just turn dynamic off, and then there we go. Something like this. And then if we really wanted to, we can go through here. And then we can just move these things around. So now we've got quads in this area here. Okay, so let's say that's our topology. Same on both sides. And then we can go into A. That'll make it our adapt to skin preview. We've got the skin density at one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say make adapt to skin. And then we can go in here to insert our skin Z sphere. We don't need the Z sphere anymore, so go ahead and delete it. And now we've got a brand new skin with our eye modeled in, the rest of the body's fine. So now we can just go through and uh, start projecting our details back. So we've got just these two showing. You can see that. So now I can just go here to project all. Hit M, yeah, and we have uh, X turned on. We can hit Control D, and then project all. Control D, 
project all. And if we want to, we can also turn on solo mode. As long as that's still visible, we can see what kind of details we're picking up. So let's do control D one more time and then project all. And I think we'll be back to kind of where we started. So we can flip between these and like, here's my DynaMesh, here's my Ziri mesh. No difference at all. So we don't need this DynaMesh anymore. We can hit delete. And now we just have our Ziri mesh here um, with subdivisions. Uh oh, looks like we got a hole on one side of his head. Hmm. That's not good. Let's go back down to subdivision level one. And okay, before you do project and project all, go ahead and do a quick um, mirror. Let's go delete higher. We'll do a quick mirror and then mirror and weld. And now I get rid of that. Uh, I should have checked both sides. I assumed it was mirrored, but uh, sometimes Z spheres can get a little bit wonky. Um, so now that we have that, of course, we've lost our high res because we deleted it. That's okay. So we'll go ahead and do a save as, and this will be ant eater o2 z remesh. And now we can load up our tool of the giant ant eater 2. I can do delete other. And then go back to my Ziri mesh. We can go to insert and we can just reinsert our original high res sculpt. So no big deal. Now we have our Ziri mesh here. We've got no more holes. And now again, project all, control D, project all, control D, project all. And one more, control D and project all. Whew. Okay. Um, do you save your UI? Yes. Uh, yeah, and that would just be under preferences, custom, or um, config, store config, and that'll save your whole setup. Um, Q1, Q11 doesn't work under ZBrush. I have to use a mouse sculpt. Oh, man. Yeah, I can't imagine trying to sculpt with a mouse. That'd be a nightmare. Uh, especially on brushes like the H polish brush. I'll get some questions sometimes where it's like my H polish brush doesn't work like it does in your videos. It doesn't like do a nice soft transition. It's it does it more like it really deforms my mesh a lot. And it's because um, H polish brush and brushes like that are you know, more of a feel brush. You know, you got to use pressure sensitivity in order to really kind of dial in exactly the kind of shape you want. So that's where a mouse might uh, run into some settings here. Uh, when you're doing a DynaMesh negative, at what point would you use the DynaMesh sub button instead? Never. Um, for example, if I have a Z-sphere, I mean, you can use the DynaMesh sub button if you want to, but what I tend to do is make PolyMesh 3D, and then if I want to take a chunk out of here, let's go ahead and turn our resolution down, make this a little bit faster. So we got this DynaMesh, right? Um, if we go to just our primitives here, we take a cylinder and we hold down Alt. See how it makes it kind of a white um, polygroup? That'll go ahead and uh, cut in. Um, if you wanted to, and this is what I usually do, is I'll go through here and I'll grab a cylinder. Then I'll go ahead and push it in. I'll be like, okay, that's what I want my DynaMesh sub to be. So I'll go ahead and split off uh, mass points. So now we've got a separate subtool here. And now I can really dial in with transparency exactly where I want this thing to go. Or if I want to, say, mask the bottom of this thing, and then um, scale it down and taper it or whatever you want to make. It's like, okay, now now I want to cut this piece out of this piece. Well, you can even preview it first if you want to by going into your live Boolean and turning this um, little subtractive off. So now you can even look at it and say, oh, I didn't want it that deep. So you can kind of dial it in and kind of see, oh, you want to scale, scale up a little bit more. Okay, that's about what I want. So you can turn off live Boolean here and now you can say merge down. Now, if you merge this down and you click on this little subtractive one, what you're going to see is when you merge them, it's going to make the subtool white, and now it'll go ahead and be subtractive. Alternatively, you could also go through here. Um, again, grab your cylinder here, drag it out, go ahead and um, move this in. And it's like, oh, you know what? I want to subtract this, but if I control drag, it's going to be, be additive, right? Um, if you go down here to your poly groups and you go here to group is DynaMesh sub. Now when you drag it out, it'll go ahead and DynaMesh sub that. So during none of those options did I go over here and do DynaMesh sub, but I was able to do DynaMesh subs 
in three different ways. Um, so I personally don't use it on my side. You you might. It might just be a button that you have available to you in here. It's not nothing wrong with that. Um, but those are how I would do it. I ever do a tutorial series on 3D Coat? Um, oh, it's been so long since I've used 3D Coat. I don't know if I'd give a very good one. I'd have to get back in there and do another deep dive. It's been a while. Um, texturing feathers or something like that in a faster way rather than making them one by one. Um, that would be, we're going to get into fiber mesh. I'd probably use fiber mesh for my feathers. Or an insert mesh brush if you want to be very, very precise. Um, how can I light with spotlight and key shot? Um, spotlight. Like this thing? That I don't know. I'm not sure that you can do anything with spotlight. You can texture with spotlight. So basically you can have um, a model in here and then when you go into your standard brush with RGB turned on and you can just paint. And then when you send this over to Keyshot, it'll just be um, vertex color. Uh, I accidentally discovered my cat loves honey yesterday. <laughs> As he knows, cat likes butter. Uh, we're not allowed to have cats in this house because uh, Aaron loves cats, but she's also super allergic to them. Um, and also donkeys. So cats and donkeys we can't have in the house. So she pets a cat or a donkey and then touches anything on her face. Her eyes just swell up. <laughs> she gets really itchy. Um, cool, cool. Uh, Phil R8 is a little bit buggy, but Lazy Mouse tends to go crazy at times as well. Um, okay, so what you're probably... I mean, I'm just guessing here, but what you might be running into, you go to standard brush and you have your lazy mouse turned on. And if you go close to this, um, sometimes what will happen is see how when I got to the bottom of that stroke and I want to start another stroke um, next to it and it like wants to like snap to a weird spot. Let's see if I can get it to do. So here and then I go here and it just kind of snaps my brush over. Um, that's a feature. What are your stroke option? Lazy mouse, and you're going to see there's a lazy snap. Turn that down to zero, and now you won't get that problem. Basically, what it's doing is brush chisel here. What it's doing is allowing you to let's do control D. Start here, and then start off where you left off. So if you have this lazy snap up, by which is on by default, you can just start your end of your stroke from where you left off. So if you go over here and you say morph target, store morph target. And then you draw this out and then you go, you don't even have to be that close. Um, well, I guess you do. You go here and then you can get kind of close, like it doesn't have to be perfect and it will snap to right where you left off. So it's useful for this, uh, but it could cause your brush to do a little bit of wonk, wacky stuff um, if you're not expecting it. So try going into your lazy mouse modifiers and turning lazy snap down to zero. Now you won't be able to do this. It'll just start from where you actually click. Um, so you won't be snapping perfectly, uh, but it will alleviate some wackiness if you're experiencing that. Um, Hugo says, why don't you, why you don't use the curve brush? Curve brush. Um, I use curve brush all the time. Not at the minute, but we've used a curve brush. Is it possible to move points with the topology brush? Uh, no, but you can convert it to a uh, mesh and then you can use your move brush. Is there a way to hide points that might fall behind the points in the front? Uh, no, and on the mouth there was, I mean, actually, yeah, you can. Um, so if we go over here to, I think you can, let's go to, it might be a little bit tricky, but you can go to append, actually, you know what we can do? Let's just duplicate this off, and then we'll just z-remesh this thing really quick. Let that go. Uh, actually, I probably should have. So whenever you're doing this, uh, you can decimate these things down, or you can drop to a lower subdivision level. Let me hit escape. So if I go down here, and then I should zero mesh this thing because we're just looking for the basics forms, basic forms here. 
Uh, so now we can go ahead and clone that off, delete this, insert a Z sphere. It's already in there. Let's go ahead and go to density of one, zero, um, topology, select topology, and then edit topology. So if you do have pieces that you don't want to see on your topology, we're in draw mode. So I think if you go over here, you can get you can hold down control shift and let's like select a rectangle here. And now you can like hold down alt and you can hide these things that you don't want to look at. Uh, just be aware that they are hidden. You can also mask. Uh, I don't know if it'll actually show up, but you can mask those points. So when you go in here and move, it won't move those ones. Oops, let's go into move mode. So we can move all of these at once, but we won't be able to move here because they're masked. So you can mask and hide these things just as like you normally would. Maybe an option. I don't use it very often, but... Why Smart Resim instead of Mirror and Weld? Because um, we did a Mirror and Weld to get my geometry perfectly mirrored. Uh, but if you have subdivision history, you can't do a Mirror and Weld. So since we had subdivision history, we just we fixed one side the way we liked it with Project All, and then we did a Smart Resim to maintain our subdivision history and also get um, our details back. Uh... I don't know what is up with I've got this thing cranked up like literally I don't know if I can go any higher on my audio can you hear me now yeah you have to apply you can't just download it off their site right now <laughs> yes yeah, an anteater dog um Yes, new computer. If you haven't seen it yet, I did a whole video on uh, hardware. So go to my playlist here and click on hardware, and that'll walk you through. I even do the unboxing of it if you want to watch that. And then uh, it's got all the specs in the description. So if you go to the video here and then go to the description, this has all the little parts list here. And then these are the parts that I started with, but then swapped out. <laughs> nice. Cool. All right. Well, if you can hear me in Sweden, I'm going to call that a win and keep moving forward. So we've talked a lot about this stuff. I guess we don't need this anymore. So let's go back to our giant anteater. We finally got, let's go to Matt Cap White here. Oh, we need to do another projectile. So this is our Dynamesh. So we go into solo mode here. <clears throat> Here's our Dynamesh. Here's our zebra mesher and project all. So let's go ahead and delete that one again. Now we don't have a hole on the side of the head anymore, so which that's kind of nice. And now we can go through here. And because we have subdivision levels, feel free to drop these down and make larger changes or smooth out any changes. And then as you go up, um, and it'll also just be a nicer mesh to work on. You'll have nice smooth quads here. So you can go through here and the mesh should just behave um, a lot more predictably. So that's just a really easy way to kind of, and I'm not going to sit here and completely detail this thing out. I think I've put you guys through enough of that. Um, but I did want to go through the process just so when I hand this off, um, that part's already done. But you can see now you would go through here and do like your crazy detail because you've already got the basics here. Um, and actually I probably should have put in some nose bags for the nostrils too as well. Um, just because I mean, you can fix it in the texture where you can put a texture in here where you won't pick up any specular and just make it make it really black uh, and that'll work as well. But sometimes it's nice just to put a really kind of a deep hole in there to kind of help that out as well. Uh, but probably not a huge deal. But again, do as I say, not as I do. Let's look at that guy's snoot again. Go ahead and smooth this back. And, you know, we're up to 741,000 which I'm probably going to subdivide one more time, <clears throat> one more time before we call it quits on this guy. But again, I'm not going to have you guys go through that. Got, anyway, uh, we got this thing remeshed and subdivided, ready to detail out. I'm going to turn everything back on. I can make sure his eyes fit. Let's hold on shift. There we go. We can make sure his eyes are correct in here. 
move this thing around, maybe scale them up a little bit. Again, make sure we're honest. Make sure his eyes kind of fit in here. Good enough. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. And this is, let's go to view, details, date modified. So we were working with the remesh version. Boom, saved, uh, and we're good to go. <laughs> uh, how does it go working standing up? So I did move my computer back to keep it up uh, elevated, but I can lower this. We, I do have an electric desk, so I can lower it, and I had to on the weekend. When I'm just working for a couple hours a day uh, at home, I don't mind standing up at all. In fact, I prefer it because I can just walk up to my computer and stand up, and just like I'm doing right now, I'm standing up. However, if I'm working 8, 10, 12 hours a day, I like to alternate between sitting and standing up. So if I sit in my butt all day at work and then I come home, I don't mind standing up. But I do mind standing up all day. So, uh, retopology, not a thing now for game assets. Decimation install, a new thing now. Um, yeah, and Z-Remesher, if you need animatable meshes. But, I mean, you can always go back in and manually retopologize. You just have to weigh the cost-benefit of, can I get there 90%? to a shippable asset and nobody knows the difference or do I spend millions of dollars or an, an exorbitant amount of time and outsourcing to get a 10% better result so I can get 90% in 15 seconds or I can get 100% in four and a half hours or two days or a week or three outsource companies cost benefit is it really that beneficial to get a slightly more optimized result by spending an extra week on an object, or do you just do the 90 second version and go, you know what, maybe it's not quite as good, but here's the other thing too, as the tools get better and as the tools mature, the results are gonna get better. So eventually that 90% is gonna turn into 95%, and that 95% is gonna turn into 97%. That 97% eventually is gonna be close enough to where, who cares if your UVs aren't perfectly optimized or your meshes aren't perfectly optimized. If the result is 97% in 15 seconds, are you going to spend an extra week to get that extra 3% out of it? Probably not. Even if you have a really crusty old lead who's like, I want to make sure that everything is in its place and it has to be to my standards, um, eventually they will be replaced by people because <laughs> that isn't going to fly when it comes to uh, cost effectiveness and also being able to evaluate properly and really picking and choosing your battles from a budgetary standpoint. Um, yes, we're going to uh, hop on the fiber mesh real quick. And I'm just going to do a really quick fiber mesh. Um, so thanks for bringing that up. So let's go into our texture here and let's import. Do I got like a, a better side view here? Uh, this one might work. Ooh, there we go. Let's use this one. So we're going to go to texture, grab it, plus sign, and then hit Z. And now we can go ahead and paint this guy up. So I'm going to put him, actually, let's zoom this guy up a little bit. And this doesn't have to be super accurate or anything. I'm just using this as a base for my fiber mesh here. So we can go in here. Whoa, RGB. There we go. Go ahead and paint this guy on. And then the arms here, these are really going to fluff out, but they should be this color. And then his little feet. Something like that. Creepy. Uh, and then it's just going to be a matter of you know, if I want to get super specific, I mean, I do have some where he's on his belly. Uh, this looks like he's got kind of matted wet hair. So probably just black, it looks like, and little white arms in here. So I could just go through here. I can hit C. Let's also change it to a skin shader so we can see a little bit better. I'm just going to go through here and paint all this black, and then we'll leave his arms white here. Good enough. And this may not work out that great but we'll give it a shot. And if I do go down here and paint this all black, I can go back in. I'm just kind of doing a coating here. 
And then for the arms, yeah, I want to keep the arms white. And then this black stripe on the wrist will carry this all the way around here. And then you can sample from other areas, like if I want to do maybe this gray here, we can kind of pepper these grays throughout. Just kind of break up his legs here, and he's got some, maybe some little gray areas in here. Whatever. And we'll go to the back, and it looks like he's pretty white along here. Let's see. Let's see. So now we got this guy poly painted in. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of fiber mesh. So we've got our guy here. In order to determine where our fiber mesh is going to go, I'm going to temporarily turn off our poly paint. I'm going to mask everything. And then, because we can fiber mesh in layers. So as you can see on this guy, he's got very short, fine fur on his face. And then it goes to a little bit thicker on his neck. And then it goes just hog wild. Uh, especially on the tail back here. So we're probably going to do the fiber mesh in several passes. Uh, maybe not today, but I'm just going to give you a quick overview today so we can go into Painter real quick um, and see if I can figure that out. But uh, so what we can do is we can start with the head. So I'm going to mask lasso just where it's very... I'm just going to blur that out a little bit. Control tap to blur your masks. Or you go to the masking menu and blur. And then we can go down here to our fiber mesh here. And we'll go... You can go to your light box fibers if you have... Uh, fiber mesh already set up, but I'm going to go ahead and just do a preview. And now his head is covered with fibers. So let's go to our modifiers here. I'm going to change our length way down. So we're just going to get kind of a fuzzy look, and then I can crank my maps, max fibers up. And now you can have just kind of a fuzzy face. So that could be, you know, part one. And also what we want to do... Oh, let's see if I remember how to do this. Uh, base colorize. Base color. Oh, so if you hover over anything in ZBrush, you get the name and the possible hotkey. And then if you hold down Control, you can um, get more information on that. Uh, T colorize sliders colors the tip of the fly fibers using color selected colors. Base fibers using color selected the corresponding patch. So, uh, color profile, base color variations, tip color variations. And let's also switch this to a so we got the base and the tip color. But if I want to colorize using my poly paint, ooh, do I remember how to do that? I want to say, I mean, I know you can. Let me do a quick test here. I just want something obvious. So I got a red, and then I've got a green, and then I've got a fiber mesh, and then I've got inherit it, inherit it. Um, oh, there we go. Okay, so base colorize up to one. We'll inherit it and then tip colorize down to zero. So base colorize up to one, tip colorize down to zero, and now you've got that. Good to know. So back down here, and we got our previews here. So base colorize up to one, and then tip color down to zero. <clears throat> and now those fiber meshes will inherit the underlying poly paint. So that's a good start. Let's go ahead and say you're looking fine. So let's go ahead and accept that fiber mesh. Sure. And now what we need to do is go back to our animator here. We've already got the head masked out. So if I control tap to invert that, now you've got the body masked out. Um, and we can go ahead and do, and basically what you're going to do is break down, like I would say, these shorter hairs through here and the neck is what I would do next and then maybe the longer hairs on the body and then maybe the super long hairs on the tail so uh, again I'm not going to do all of these but we'll go ahead and go okay now here I want this to kind of be our medium so let's go ahead and do and we can blur that mask a little bit and then go down here to preview 
and now we want to crank up our max uh, our length at least here and then our max fibers we'll crank it down a little bit and is that about right uh, that's still like a little bit long okay I think that'll work we'll go ahead and accept these back to our giant editor. Again, invert that mask. Then the rest of this, we've already done the head. We can unmask that. Uh, these are going to be really long, and then the tail will save for very last, and actually probably a little bit here, too. So now we got this mask. We can go down here to preview and crank our max fibers up and our length. And now we're, we'll, <laughs> whoa, we'll groom these as needed once I get this uh, all figured out. Um, and we can also make them longer and shorter as we go through, but we'll say that's about right. Um, in fact, if we go through here and we go, oh, you know what? Um, turns out I forgot. Let's go ahead and turn off our preview here. And I'm going to turn off my colorize. And we can go through here. We can go, you know what? I forgot that I don't want the bottom of his feet. Let's go to mask pin here, control alt. So this little pad on his feet here, I don't want. And then the little bottoms of his feet as well. Those are just going to be skin. And now we can just turn fiber mesh back on. There we go. And of course we want to have our poly paint on. And of course we want to have our base color up to one. I like that. We'll hit accept. And now, I guess since we're so close anyways, we'll control tap to invert that mask. And then we've already masked the stuff out. So this is going to be the really long hair. So we'll go ahead and turn our poly paint back on. Fiber mesh. Crank that length up really high. That's going to be our hair, and uh, oops, we need to also unmask here. Okay, so we got this fiber mesh here. Let's crank our max fibers down a little bit. And again, we can make these ones back here shorter just by through grooming and stuff, but let's say Okay, we'll accept that. So now when we go to solo mode, we've got this guy kind of hanging out. If we turn off our body, you can see this is just fur sitting there. So the head here may look like there's geometry under here, but there is no geometry under here. You can see just a floating eyeball, and this is just kind of fur sitting there. Um, so if we want to, let's go ahead and just do a quick save on perspective. And if you want to see this fur uh, rendered a little bit better, we can go to uh, BPR. And while this is rendering all. Um, cool. Awesome. Thanks for showing up, everybody. By the way, I keep wanting to keep saying that. And hopefully it's helping out. How do you create a color vertex map for an asset in ZBrush? Okay, so we can do that with this guy as well. Now there's a lot of fibers in here. Um, but you can see there's the fiber mesh result we're getting. Looks pretty cool. Um, getting these fiber meshes out of ZBrush, you can export them as curves, um, or you can just use it as pre -vis within ZBrush here. Uh, and I forgot to turn the body back on, so this is just this is literally just rendering the fur here. But um, you can go through here and you can groom this stuff. So you can go to like B, oops, B G. Um, there's groom brushes in here. Um, groom. It's been a while since I've used this stuff. Groom hair short, groom hair toss. These are fun. These are just kind of fun to play with here. So if we do like hair toss, and you want to make sure you alt tap the one you want to work on, and then you can just go through here, and you can groom this stuff down and out. And you can even use your move brush. Now when you start using, like say your move brush, and you start pulling, you're gonna see it's going to mask the root automatically. That's a function of your brush setting. So under brush, uh, auto masking, 
you're going to see auto mask fiber mesh that masks the roots of your fiber mesh if you hold down shift you can kind of smooth those back a little bit and then you can use use your groom brushes here um, to do whatever you need to do and also you, you can even use snake hook if you want to for these things i'll make sure you have rgb turned off so you don't get rid of the colorize there um but yeah so that's fibers now when we were talking about this thing here let's hold down shift and turn everything off so we've got this guy he's got a poly paint on him and he also has subdivision history so what i can do is i can go to z plugin uh uv master uh he is symmetrical so we can do symmetry we don't have poly groups on here but i would use poly groups to uh, split him up if you would need to, but I'm just going to do a quick unwrap. And then we'll flatten him uh, without... Oh, whoops. Okay, always do this too. Work on clone. <laughs> and then you can do uh, unwrap. Duh. Flatten. There's my pelt. Um, so now I can unflatten him, go copy UVs, and then I can go back over here to my anteater, and then I can just paste UVs. And now, when I subdivide him up, you're going to see he has UVs now and he has this. So if I want to go out here, if I want to bake from my low res to my high res, all I got to do is go to my, where is it at? Multi-map exporter and I can bake out a displacement map, normal map, texture from polypaint and the occlusion cavity. I can export all of these. Uh, just really quickly though, I go down here to texture map, create new from polypaint. And now you can see I've got my polypaint as a texture. And then you can just go to clone texture and then go to your texture over here. And you can export this, or you can go to texture up here, have it selected, and go to export, and you just export that texture out. Uh, so a tutorial where a dude got near perfect face loops and zero mesher and polygrouping in about three minutes tops. Yes, so one of those that I like to, s to use, if you go to ZBrush for, I like this method here. So Steve James goes through. Uh, you can do your polygrouping like this. And what if you turn on, um, if you use these as guides uh, for your Ziri mesher, you can get this kind of topology as well and use that method. Didn't really feel like going through and making polygroups on his eyeball there, but that's certainly a. Is there currently an alternative to Insta Law? They seem to have lag on response time. Um, not all the functionality. There are some programs out there where you can do some of what it does, ish, uh, but there's a lot of stuff in there. It's a very production tool, so they, they did their homework. Uh, but you know, if you, I posted this recently, let me do, um, so Houdini is another one that I like, that I like here. So uh, high resolution to game res in Houdini. I can link you guys to that one. That's a fun one. So Houdini is another alternative. Um, we'll be doing some Houdini stuff in the in the f near future. So how would you bake this down to a game hair card? Uh, you would have to in the fiber mesh settings. Let's go back to our thing here, and let's go turn our fiber mesh back on. So we'll go to. Fiber mesh, preview, and then in here, we're going to crank our mesh fibers way down, and then our, it's been a while since I've done this, so profile one, let's crank our coverage up. So this is more of a hair cards method, and the luck, the good thing is, um, let's also go to the width profile and crank these up here all the way. So you can use these as hair cards. If you're so inclined, you can also manually just draw out your hair cards. Um, I usually, if I'm doing anything special, manually draw out my hair cards and then I'll use Geo to Maya hair to do all that kind of thing. But this is another method for using hair cards. And if you go in here to texture, you can see that um, it is going root to tip. So it is giving you UVs uh, from root to tip. Uh, if you were to export these, uh, if we go to accept and then go look at them here, let's turn off our texture map here. 
So our hair cards, we can just, it's just geometry, and they're UV'd from root to tip. So you could use that method instead. I don't know that you would bake out. Um, if you wanted to bake out, like, strands of hair onto a hair card, you would have to lay out. You could use fiber mesh to lay out strands of hair on a plane, and then you could bake that alpha and texture map information to a plane. Um, I don't know if I'd use ZBrush for that, but you could certainly try. Do you use Max for any part of your modeling? I haven't used Max since I started with Max in 1999. So it was Kinetics 3D Studio Max. Um, I don't know, like 2.5 or something like that. And uh, so I started in 3D Studio Max, but honestly, uh, ever since, so when I went to college, uh, Ringling, EA Tiburon, Sony, and certain affinity and all the projects we've worked on have had a Maya backbone for their um, animation and also just getting assets in the game. So I've never had to use Max ever in my career for any project I've ever been on. So it never really got back into Max. Nothing wrong with it. It's just that's my personal experience. Uh, way to store a mask for later use. Yeah, you can go into your layers. Um, and layers should... Now, I I don't use layers a whole lot, but you should be able to store uh, masking information within layers. You can also, if you're so inclined, this is an alternative to that. I'm going to go ahead and clone this off. So what you can do is, on your poly paints, let's go to texture. Off. You can go through here, you can hold down, um, you can just paint, or you can um, turn this off here. You can have a mask, and then uh, you can convert this mask to a poly paint here. So if I just invert that and fill that with black, now I've got a texture map. Um, That's kind of a, a long way around your question here. So if you're not going to use layers, you can go to texture new from poly paint, and then you can go poly paint from texture. And then now that you've converted that poly paint to a texture, you can go down here to your masking menu. And of course, you can make macros for this, or you can make a custom menu for this type of work. You go here to masking. You can do mask by color intensity, I think. And now when we turn off our poly paint, you're going to see we have a mask. <laughs> Roundabout way to get it, but that's a, another uh, option for you. Um, cool, it's so hard to follow me as your experience. You don't know all the things in ZBrush, like what UV mask and so on. Yeah, so if you are just starting out, I mean, if it's it's fine just to kind of, like, like you said, I like to watch. Um, I might not necessarily be able to follow along, but certainly for sure on my YouTube channel here, I'll link you guys again. Go to the intro to ZBrush part one, and that's that'll walk you through. That's That's got a lot of... Uh, information. The only weird thing about it is it's uh, inter it's uh, 4R7, which there's everything's the same except for, not everything, but if you go to the um, Zebra Story 8, what's new, watch the first four videos on Gizmo, the Gizmo thing, which is basically this thing right here, and then you'll be all set. Uh, COV near the coverage to the negatives, you can make even wider cards. Oh, good point, George, thanks for bringing it up. I forgot about that. Or I didn't even consider that, to be more honest. Um, so when I make the poly paint, OBJ used to make the poly paint, I send it through Studio Max. When I put the material and load the poly paint on diffuse map, the mesh turns black. That I don't know. Uh, simplify this by copying one UV to all those cards. I'm still trying to find the most effective way. It should just be, they should be, yeah, layered on top of each other, so they are one UV. Uh, say you've sculpted 2,000 coins on your mesh. Uh, ooh, if you use an insert mesh with UVs, you can do that. Because uh, your insert meshes should be able to maintain their UVs. But, um, yeah, if you sculpted them all separately and then want to do that, ooh, that'd be a tough one. I'm not sure how you would do that. I'm reading the chat from here. So this is my... Uh, and it's all it's from Twitch and YouTube mostly. 
Okay, okay. Any tools from R7 that were part of your workflow that you don't regularly use anymore in R8? Transpose line I don't use hardly at all anymore unless I want to do a little simple transpose modeling or smart transpose masking. Uh, any big tools you use, used to use that you don't now? Uh, probably, no. R7 is still very relevant. Like, they've added some cool stuff you can use in R8, but um, R7 is still very, very relevant. Um, poly painting through spotlight. The image is always offset for some reason. Offset. That I'm not sure about. As you're painting through, maybe turn perspective off? Maybe. Uh, anatomy. Yeah, uh, and anatomy just, uh, Craig says, um, Achilles heel's anatomy. Uh, it's, uh, it takes a long time. And I'm, I'm, I do a lot of anatomy, and I still, I'm still not a master at it, obviously. Cool. All right, so we got a little bit of time left. Let's see. We got this, like, all figured out. We got the fur all rendered out. Um, I need to show my wife. She's always bugging me about making our dog in ZBrush. So now that we got fiber mesh, we can maybe do that. Do you want to see the, the anteater fur? So here's, here's the furry anteater. So we can maybe do Pepper. If you haven't seen Pepper, my workstation video has Pepper in every shot, pretty much, because she likes to hang around with her dad while he's doing videos. Um, so we've got this. We've got this saved. Let's go ahead and save it one more time. Giant anteater. Fiber mesh. And now we're going to hop into Painter here. Let's go to something that's Painter. So we've downloaded... Go to my PC here, and let's go to our downloads folder, and I'm just going to make a new temporary folder on my desktop here. Give me a second. So, I'm going to take this GDC female 7-zip extract here, and let's see what we got in here. Okay, we got an OBJ, so I'm going to copy this directory. And we got Substance Painter, you guys can see that. Good. File, new, select, uh, GDC female OBJ, add. Let's go ahead and just add in all the, I'm assuming they're targas. Well, maybe I'm lying. Oh. Uh, come on, GDC female. I want to search for oh dot targa. Stupid. Is it not gonna do it? All right, fine. Arm. Add. That still bugs me. <sighs> Flashbang. Add. And this is going to be, is this multiple texture set? So we will talk about um, how to solo these things out. But for now, handgun, hands, helmet, lower body, and of course, our upper body. Yay. So now we have all of these texture sets here, and we've got the arms first. So we can go in here to textures and try to drag these down, or we can just do a search for arm, and that'll narrow it down for us. And we can just drag with the arm shader group here. We can go into solo and just look at the arms here. And uh, so now we got arms in here. We can go to our texture set settings, and oh, we've already got, it already had the arms for us, it looks like, except for the normal map. Interesting. I wonder if I didn't save it. Maybe it should have been. No, I think normal is right. So now I've got the normal in here. If we go to all, we got the flashbang. Flashbang is already set up, except for the normal map. And if we go to the forearms here, normal map, handgun, normal map. Head, normal map, sorry this is boring, lower body, normal 
normal map, upper body. Okay, there she is, ready to be poly painted. Our ID maps maps are already in there. Um, so we could, should, uh, it looks like the normals are the correct way. If it's not, uh, if you did have a project where somebody did it in DirectX instead of OpenGL, what's the default? You can go here to edit project config. And so instead of OpenGL, you could do DirectX, but it looks like um, OpenGL is working just fine. Looks like everything's working. Everything's plugged in. Everything's high res. Um, by default, I think I have it set to 2048. If you did have this like set to 512 in your settings, you would just be, you would have like a low res look. So make sure you go over here and you set it to, I think the maps natively are 2048. So you just go through here. And then if you want to start poly painting, uh, if you want to go again, go to my, you can go to my Gumroad page or my Cube Brush page, and you can just download the videos there if that's easier for you. Or you can go to my YouTube channel here. Uh, this is my Pavlovich Workshop YouTube channel. I, this is when I stream on Pixelogic. That's where they back up their videos. And then, of course, my YouTube channel. If you scroll down, you'll see Intro to our Substance Painter Quick Start. It's a little bit dated, but it should still be fairly relevant. Um, you can also, we just did another spin in Substance Painter. If you go to the, uh, I, do ton, I do a lot of Substance Painter in here, but you can just look through those. But if we go here to like smart materials and we go to, let's have a little bit of fun. We'll do like bronze armor. We'll drag this out. And then we can like right click this, do add mask with color selection. We can pick a color. And since we're working on the upper body, we can go, I want the bronze to be where the red is. So now it's all bronze where the red is. Uh, what I'd also like to do is just put a little base down here. We'll do like um, steel dark. And we'll just throw this down at the bottom here. And that'll just be the base that everything else sits on. So now I can go through here and modify this as needed. We can also maybe try, and you know, you can just go to materials. You can make your own materials. You guys know the basics of this stuff. It's nothing new. Plastic, pick, um, plastic on that gray here. If like, oh, I don't like that plastic, just go over here. It's like, let's make this a gray, maybe a dark gray, and it's like it not so shiny. So we'll crank that roughness up just a bit. There we go. So we're we're texturing on it. If we don't like this bronze armor, we can just kill it. And we can go to like maybe a painted steel painted here. There we go. And if we don't like um, the steel painted, you're going to see the mask here is where the color selection goes. If you want to see that, you can hold down Alt and tap and all that good stuff. So somebody was having problems on the intranet about getting this thing loaded up and it being too low res. It looks damn high res to me. So I'm not sure what that's what's going on there, but we'll go to this and we'll go to the mask editor here. And now we can just change our balance here. We could just knock back um, some of these scratches or we can crank up some of the stuff in here. Or if we don't even like this one, we can go to we can kill it and then we got our paint sitting here so if we want the paint to show up we can use the smart masks here and we can go to moisture sand edges scratched we can throw that on there and now we've got this let's go ahead and go to the scratches and let's go to invert and now we're getting like really scratchy metal on there or with a sharpen filter or you can go in here and you can do a generator and then in here we go to like metal edge wear and then of course you're going to want to invert this as well Sometimes it's set up for it's inverted where you want it to go. Sometimes it's not, but it's pretty simple to just go through here. We can just do like a light wear. And then you can also throw a, add a paint layer on here so we can do it non-destructively. You can go here to your brushes. You can take your scratches brush. And then you can go through here just manually and just scratch the hell out of this armor. Of course, uh, we're painting on here. We want to paint black, so I'm going to hit X. And now we can kind of just manually go through here and scratch or fiber scratch or fur scratch or sandpaper you can take a sandpaper to it um, another cool one is if you go here to your particles you can do like a liquid stream and that'll just put a mask so if we hit the alt key and then we just paint with the let's hit x here huh it's not updating on the channel that's interesting oh wait that's because i'm not doing it on the paint layer 
there we go so now we can go into the sorry channel and now when I spray this on you're gonna see that's where it's causing those masks to show up anyways lots of cool stuff I'm not gonna do a painter demo I just wanted to verify that this stuff did indeed work I wasn't crazy and of course uh, we can go to here to our viewer settings if you want your viewer to look a little bit better turn on um, some shadows for yourself and also go here to the display settings turn on any aliasing you can do color correction in here so we can also let's go into solo mode so now we're texturing this thing you can also throw it into iray if you want and we're running out of time so i'm gonna think i'm gonna call it a day here but let's go to the dome and we'll turn it on to a clear color here and now we can use the iray render kind of get a nice beauty shot of that thing so thanks for showing up everybody I think I'm gonna call it a day uh, any questions I missed I will throw into my streaming topics here and I can't promise I'll get to everything ever in the history of questions but Uh, fire mesh polygon hair for games. Could you help me with this? I mean, low res hair. Yeah, I hate doing hair for games. That is like hire somebody else to do it. Um, I did do hair for, I want to say Mafia Three. I worked on that for a little bit. Um, came up with a pretty good process of ZBrush. I mean, I have gone over that before. If you go to the Pavlovich workshop here, that I linked at earlier, <clears throat> and you go to go to episode six. And we go over just a ton of different hair creation techniques for eyebrows, eyelashes, dragging your own hair cards out, um, fiber mesh, all sorts of crazy stuff for hair and stuff like that. So go look at that. Hair, not my favorite thing in the world. Uh, I don't know if I answered this before, but I was wondering if the anteater is going to be free to play with from Gumroad. would love to ring it up and learn to quadrupedo creatures. Um... Actually, speaking of quadrupeds, if you go to my Facebook page, my personal one, not my business one, um, I did post just recently. So Houdini updated their stuff, and they have a lot of auto rigging for um, quadrupeds and also a lot of fur stuff. So some really cool stuff in here for that. Look at that. It's so good. <laughs> I love it. So anyways, that's just neither here nor there, but um, you can hear, I'll link you guys to that. You can check it out. Um, as far as free, it's, uh, I'll ask, Lou, it's for a VR project, but um, I don't know if they'll just put it online. Uh, and it's, and honestly, if you watch the previous episodes of this, of the live stream full episodes, we just go through and model it. So it was pretty simple to model. It wasn't too difficult. For the ID map, do you need to poly paint on the material or is the RGB enough? RGB is enough for me. I usually do vertex color and, and um, ZBrush and bake that out as my ID map. Uh, new ZBrush, you say your intro to ZBrush series is still recent enough to allow for that. Yeah, um, follow it with ZBrush 4R8, but again, go over the intro to ZBrush 4R8, what's new, and watch the first four videos on the gizmo. And then after that, you should be able to follow Intro to ZBrush Part 1 all the way through without any problems at all. Are you using Marvelous Design or anything these days or plan to? Yeah, we've gone over that before. I've got a playlist in here, Marvelous and ZBrush Quick Start, in my YouTube playlist. And I've used it in my live stream episodes before. I do need to remember to download that on my new machine. So I'm going to go ahead and install that now that you mentioned that. Uh, you make those ID maps by polygrouping. Yeah, you can polygroup or you can just call. I usually just do a color fill on the individual object. Where do you put downloaded materials again for substance? Uh, those I usually just drag and drop. So when you if when you download a material, just drag it from your Windows Explorer into here and tell it, hey, it's a material, I want to use it and put it in my shelf. And then I'll just go ahead and add it to your poly paint or your painter shelves. Um, how to use tools underneath particles? Um, that I'm not sure. Are you talking about tools in here? Ooh, that might be beyond, be beyond my expertise, expertise, <laughs> and expertise. Uh, cool. Thanks, everybody. Um, I won't be on Pixelogic's live stream next Tuesday, but I will be on mine next Thursday. So, see you guys next week. Bye, everybody. <laughs>